Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody is having a good week, weekend so far. Looking forward to a great weekend, staying healthy and strong. Hi, Nandini, Aziz Beck, Kabir, Eric Sol, Lydia, Hashem. Nice to see many students. Hi, Nig Heyman, and welcome our members as well. Hi, Sammy. Uh, students, in this class, we are focusing on the reading section for the academic IELTS. Of course, this will help you with the general IELTS, although general IELTS is a reading is a little bit different, except for passage three, or uh, sorry, I should say section three. Section three of the general IELTS is very, very similar to the sections in the academic IELTS, so keep that in mind. Hi, Parmar, I believe... Uh, you weren't in the last class, but great to see you in this class. Hi, Rashika. Uh, again, students, uh, these classes are presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Definitely visit us there. And for general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials, original practice exams, interactive courses, uh, over 100 hours of HD video lessons as well. And this is our academic website here with the blue background at aehelp.com. Click the big red button to get access to our premium package. And this is our general IELTS uh, web portal here at gltshelp.com. Again, click that big red button uh, to join us there. If you have questions, comments, concerns, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly respond to your inquiries. Uh, so again, today we have this reading class. Uh, tomorrow we'll finish the task two with members that we started earlier, and we'll have a speaking part three class for everyone. Now, um, this class, of course, is titled Strategies That Work. So, uh, that's because there are a lot of uh, strategies out there that are uh, kind of going around the internet and in classes like skimming and scanning for keywords and answers. And a lot of those strategies are not accurate. Uh, they don't quite work the way uh, people sometimes believe. So skim reading for keywords might get you to a band five, but it definitely will not get you to a band uh, seven. So the first strategy when you're in the reading section is, of course, to uh, read the title, okay? So uh, the title of today's reading passage is The Formation of the Himalayas. The Formation of the Himalayas. Now, uh, when we read the title of the passage, there are two very important steps. Uh, the first one is visualize, and the second is to think critically about it. So what are they, why are they, okay? So let's uh, use your visualization and your knowledge, okay? So step one, read the title. And remember to see the information like a video. Not just a still image. Okay, so um, when you read this title, so Formation of the Himalayas, what do you see? Okay. So the uh, formation of the Himalayas. Um, what do you see? So when you read this title, what kind of picture comes to mind? And again, what kind of video, I should say, comes to mind? So Lydia, it's the highest peaks on Earth. Himalayas is a mountain range. Okay. Uh, so Kyber says the action of forming or the process of forming the Himalayas. That's a good step, uh, Kyber. So you're actually seeing that. So what do you see? 
Um, what do you actually picture in your head when you hear this phrase, the formation of the Himalayas? Okay. So An says, I see the Himalaya mountains with snow and with breeze. So uh, students, the title isn't just the Himalayas. Okay. It's the formation of the Himalayas. Okay. So it's not, not only this. Okay. It's the formation of the Himalayas. So if you only see the Himalayan mountains, then you're only seeing a part of the video or a part of the picture. Okay. Uh, you have to think about the word formation as well. So when you're thinking of formation, uh, what do you think? Okay. And I think most of us learned a bit about this in our geography uh, classes as well. Okay. So formation means the creation of these mountains. Okay. So Begjan says, I see volcanoes. All right. Sammy says, I see huge mountains covered with snow. Um, I would say something like this. So... I see myself um, on a spaceship looking down at Earth and watching the Indian subcontinent uh, crash into the, uh, I believe it's called the Eurasian. Uh, continent very aggressively and um, in this process rolling up the earth into the amazing mountain range. I see the earthquakes. Okay. So that's what I would see when I read this, the formation of the Himalayas. Okay. So uh, mountain ranges, as I'm sure most of us know, uh, they're created when two land masses uh, smash into each other. Of course, that takes millions and millions and millions of years, but we can kind of fast uh, forward or make it into a quick um, uh, time lapse, into a quick motion picture and kind of see this. Okay, so something like that. All right. And uh, you should include yourself in that picture. So don't just watch that like a TV, but be that astronaut floating in space going, whoa, look at that going on down there um, uh, on Earth, uh, the Indian subcontinent smashing into Asia there and making these incredible mountains. So that's what you should see. And then uh, you want to think critically. So uh, what is the formation of the Himalayas? Okay. Uh, answer, it is the creation of the highest mountain range on earth. Okay. Now, when you read the title, uh, you are doing this quickly. Yeah, Jainil, I can be an alien, maybe an alien that lives for millions and millions of years. And in my uh, timeline, it's only a blink of an eye or it's a quick event. Okay. Yeah, there you go, Lydia, seeing some rivers and glaciers and lots of other goodies. Now we're getting into details. So why does this happen? So uh, why do um, these mountains get formed? Okay, And of course, maybe some of the English here is missing in your vocabulary, but that's okay because you can think about this in any language as you're preparing. The more that you are in English, the better but just thinking about it is a great idea, okay? So because the continents move on the molten mantle 
of the earth, right? So there's some liquid rock underneath uh, the earth, the surface of the earth, and there's shifting of these continents constantly, and they're pushing against each other and pulling apart. And as this happens, uh, we get earthquakes and we get movement of the earth and we get these giant mountain ranges, okay? So how does it happen? One continent smashes into the other. All right. So this is happening quickly, students. So when you read the title, you're quickly visualizing as much information as possible. You're quickly thinking about what, why, how. This only takes one minute of your reading time. It's well worth it because you will understand the passage much faster and much better, and you will be able to guess the meaning of words as well, okay? So by visualizing and thinking critically of the title, you will not only be able to understand the passage better and read it faster, but you will also be able to infer the meanings of new words. Okay, and that's really important. So a lot of students say, oh, this passage is difficult because there are so many new words. Well, you have to guess these words sometimes, the meaning, and the best way to do that is to think about all of the knowledge that you have on that topic, okay? Uh, the IELTS, especially the academic IELTS, is not just a test of English, okay? is not just an English test. It is also testing your background knowledge and ability to logically interpret information quickly because it's a time test, right? So you have to keep that in mind. A lot of students are like, oh, IELTS is not fair uh, because uh, they're asking about topics that I don't know. Well, that's too bad, but that's the way it works. Um, that happens in university too or in college. When you get into college, they discuss new topics that you don't know and in university, new ideas that you don't know. So you have to understand new information in English, okay? It's very important. All right. Uh, so, you read the title, you got through this part of it, you're doing a great job uh, visualizing, and so you go to the next step, which is looking at the questions. So, you take a look at the questions, and you go, okay, let's see the questions, maybe I can get a little bit more information here. So, here we go, first one, choose no more than two words from the passage for each answer. Write your answers in boxes one to six. So. These are fill in the blanks, short answers. Uh, Himalayan formation, so how the Himalayas are created. Uh, moving land masses, rising mountains. And we read over these nice and quick. We don't get stuck up on new words. We just get as much information as we can, okay? So the Himalayas are massive. They span over 2,400 kilometers. And their formation provides evidence for something, the theory that our planet's land masses have shifted positions over eons. All right, how does it work? The atmosphere is the of the earth uh, that below the crust. It is very hot and is semi-cold. In this layer, hot gas and liquid rise up and replace cooler areas. This process called something, causes the changes of the position of Earth's continents over millions of years. Mm, okay, so kind of what we were visualizing. 
uh, creating the Himalayas. In short, the subcontinent of India caused the Himalayas. India used to be much further south, closer to the modern country of something. Though India moved only 12 centimeters per year, this rate added up to up over an something amount of time. Eventually, the force of India pushing into Asia created the highest point on Earth. Okay, so getting some ideas there. Uh, true, false, not given. We have four of these questions. We just ignore them. True, false, not given. Never read those before the passage. They can really confuse you about the content. Uh, so then we have uh, match the following concept with details about them. Okay, so you can use any letter more than one time. A, continental drift. B, convection. C, asthenosphere. Hmm, that's a new word for me. Okay, so this information is all in the passage, so it's good to just quickly look at it. Theorized more than four centuries ago, states that Earth's land masses have shifted position over time. Heat rises from the lower levels of the Earth towards the higher levels. Okay, some real geography and Earth history here. Um, so make sure to read with me, students. Don't just listen to me. Otherwise, it's only listening practice. Uh, so make sure that you're reading with me. Uh, okay, so when you um, read these, uh, try to paraphrase them in your head, okay? So theorized more than four centuries ago, I would say hypothesized over... 400 years ago. So this would be another way to think about this information. Now, if you don't know the word hypothesized, which means theorized, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, over, I'm sure most of you know that means more than. Okay. Uh, 400 years ago, I think a lot of you know that four centuries is equal to 400 years. Cool? Everybody uh, staying with me here? Okay, we're moving along nicely. Um, states that Earth's land masses have shifted position over time. Okay, so explains that the uh, planet's surface moved over millions of years. Okay, so again, paraphrasing. So all I'm doing here is just thinking about different ways that I might see this information somewhere in the passage, okay? Heat rises from the lower levels of the earth towards the higher levels. So hot temperatures move from lower altitudes on the planet to higher altitudes. That would be another way to do that, okay? All right, fantastic. So, you're doing that quickly. At home, you're doing that on paper, okay? You're paraphrasing on paper at home because that builds your vocabulary, it builds your critical thinking, it builds your analytic ability in English so that you can do that quickly in your head during the exam, okay? Practice that regularly when you're practicing the reading section, okay? So make sure to paraphrase on paper at home when you are practicing uh, so that you can do it quickly and precisely uh, during the exam in your head, okay? That's what's important. 
All right, so we've got a good idea of what's happening now. Okay, and absolutely, Kyber, with practice, you can do it quickly in your building uh, vocabulary as well. Okay, so now we read the passage. Okay, how much time do we have to read the passage so that we can answer all of the questions effectively? So how much time do we have to read the passage so that we still have enough time to calmly and confidently answer the questions? Yeah, 8 to 12, Billy, and Abhishek, roughly 10 in the middle, right? On 10 minutes, okay? Max about 12 minutes, yeah. Is that enough time or not? So is that an okay amount of time? So reading the passage in about 10 to 12 minutes, is that enough? Yeah, it's enough time. Um, how fast do you think an average Canadian uh, American high school student will read a passage like this where they mostly understand it? Okay, so it's about 600 words, maybe 700 words maximum. So these passages are roughly, on average, they're about 650 words each. So how fast do you think a high school student will read it? Okay, now there's a reason why I'm asking that. Um, so in about five, five to six minutes. Yeah, exactly. So I want you to keep this in mind <clears throat> when you're thinking about, oh, I don't have enough time and so on. Okay, and the reason I'm saying a high school student is because those are your peers, that is your competition in university. Those are your classmates in university. So for those of you taking the academic IELTS, you want to feel comfortable in university. You want to read at a similar speed as a high school student, okay? So you have about 10 minutes to read the passage to get a 70% or more understanding, okay? This must be enough time. Uh, if you can't do this, students, so if you are not able to reach this level of understanding in this time, you must increase your reading Fluency and comprehension before you sit the exam, okay? And I say that with all the kindness in my heart. So if you, for those of you taking the academic especially, the general outs is a little bit easier, um, but for those of you taking the academic, if you cannot read it in 10 minutes and understand about 70%, um, focus much, much more of your studies on building your reading fluency and comprehension. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for failure, and nobody likes failing, uh, nobody likes disappointment. So this is just being realistic, okay? Uh, learning tricks like skimming and scanning for keywords will not help you. It's, uh, you there you're just rolling the dice. It's just uh, gambling on luck, and nobody should sit a $300 exam based on luck, okay? So to avoid uh, depending on luck, you have to have this level of reading fluency, okay? Very important. All right, so uh, we read the passage, okay? Uh, we're going to read this together. Make sure to read with me. Now, while we read, it's very important that you visualize that means picture what you're reading. So keep that video rolling in your head, okay? And um, keep an order of the information as well, okay? So we're going to do that together. And you do that with some critical or also called active reading, okay? So here we go. Um, read with me. The Himalayas are a mountain range in Asia which separates the Indian subcontinent from the rest of Asia. The Himalayas contain some of the world's highest mountains, including the highest point in the world, the legendary Mount Everest. 
The range is not only tall, it is also massive, stretching 2,400 kilometers across a roughly west-east arc. The creation of the Himalayas is one of the clearest examples of the theory of continental drift, which states that Earth's continents have moved relative to each other over millions of years. Put forward over 400 years ago by Abraham Ortelius, continental drift is an example of a scientific theory which is generally accepted as fact today. All right, so a little bit about the background, uh, the geography, the geographical location of the mountains, and the person who kind of thought about the idea of how this happened. Okay. Continental drift theory posits that the continents have not always been in the positions they are in today. And the existence of the Himalayas is strong evidence of this theory. But how does continental drift work? And how did it create the Himalayas? How does continental drift work? The Earth is not a solid rock. Instead, the Earth's crust floats atop of a layer of semi-solid, very hot, 1,300 degrees Celsius, material known as the asthenosphere. In this layer, convection takes place, bringing heat from the lower reaches of the planet up towards the surface. Hot gas and liquid rises up, replacing cooler and denser gases and liquids. This circulation of hot and cold pushes the plates of the Earth's crust, shifting the appearance of the Earth over millions of years. Where a plate goes and how fast it goes depends on the convection currents below the surface any, uh, of any given point on the Earth. Cool. Right on. Okay, so so far we're doing good. And again, we're visualizing. Uh, I wonder if anybody saw the same kind of idea that I saw with this paragraph. So here, this paragraph is explaining how the land on Earth moves around, so why that happens. Um, and I had a very clear picture of an event that I regularly see in my kitchen. Uh, anybody know what that was? So for this paragraph, um, what kind of a regular event that we see in our kitchen <laughs> did you see while you read this paragraph from as much as what you got from this? Okay, and you don't need to understand all of it to get this picture. Okay, if anybody has questions that I don't answer in the class, again, just send me an email. Yeah, very good, On Same thing as me. So a boiling kettle. Um, what else did you see? So, Un, yeah, you're seeing the same thing. I saw a little bit more than the kettle. Okay. Uh, Metab says some boiling water. Uh, yeah, but what was in the boiling water, Saswati, Metab, and uh, uh, An? So I saw the boiling water as well. So as I was reading this, I was like, oh yeah, the earth is like uh, boiling water with these bubbles. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, so boiling water. And what did you see instead of land? Okay in that all right pause it Jineal means assert asserts okay uh farheen good okay so farheen saw cooking rice <laughs> good farheen um i actually saw eggs okay so some eggs uh making some hard boiled eggs everybody's made some hard boiled eggs i'm sure in the past um, when you boil the eggs, uh, the eggs are moving around, right? You have these eggs and the eggs are moving around because of the boiling, uh, water, right? Did anybody see the eggs moving around on top of the boiling water? Ding, ding, bouncing against each other. Maybe they're making little mini egg Himalayas as well, right? Little, little mini egg Himalayas. Um, if we're microscopic, that might be happening. Okay, so 
uh, that's kind of what's happening, right? Where are the, where are the eggs? Where are the little ants on top of the eggs? On the boiling water called earth, right? Yeah, potatoes, Swati, would be good as well, I'm sure. Okay, so again, the more you see, the more you associate, the better you will do, all right? Okay, um, so here we go. How did continental drift create the Himalayas? Now, pay attention to titles. This is why it's good to read uh, the questions because in the questions, we kind of saw this same title, right? So here we go. Make sure you're reading with me, okay? So the short answer is India caused the Himalayas. 100 million years ago, what is now the Indian subcontinent stood 6,400 kilometers south of its current position, near the current position of Australia. Particularly, strong convection currents below the region began to push India northward. Every year, the landmass came about 12 centimeters closer to Asia. That's about a centimeter per month. The approximate width of your pinky or little finger. This may not sound like a lot of movement, and it certainly is not on small time scales, but when taken in the context of enormous time frames, this distance becomes significant quite quickly. 12 centimeters per year is 12 meters per century, 120 meters per millennium, and 120 kilometers per million years. Oh, some interesting math there. All right. So for all of you watching from India, uh, in the past 100 million years, you were the fastest moving egg in the boiling pot of water. All of the other eggs were kind of like bloop, 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 bloop. And India was going bloop, 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 bloop. A lot of bubbles coming up under India, I guess. All right. Kind of interesting. Okay, here we go. So um, let's keep going. Uh, this means that the 6,400 kilometer gap could be closed in about 50 million years. And indeed, this is what has happened. Over this immense time frame, India slowly but surely made its way northward on a collision course that could not be stopped. So lots of visual information here. If you see yourself as this giant or this alien who has a very different time span than humans, then you can really kind of picture all of this happening, okay? Uh, Metab says, hope to reach England soon if we pick up pace. Quite possible, Metab, but I wouldn't hold your breath for that one, okay? Uh, but <laughs> you're, I think, you're, I think it's, uh, the egg is slowing down now. It hit another really big egg. It hit Asia. Okay, so here we go. Approximately 40 to 50 million years ago, the India landmass collided with the Asian continent. With nowhere for the landmass to go and with forces underneath still propelling it forward, the landmass went the only place it could go, up. Over the past tens of millions of years, the Himalayas have formed as a result of the unstoppable forces pushing India into Asia. In this time, peaks like Mount Everest have risen to over nine kilometers above the sea level. Okay, let's keep going. What's next for the Himalayas? The Himalayas continue to grow. In fact, they grow approximately one centimeter per year. Again, this may not sound like a lot, but it means the mountain range will grow about 10 kilometers in a million years. This means that in 10 million years, the mountain range could be 100 kilometers tall. If a person could travel in time, they might see a truly colossal mountain range which dwarfed everything seen on today's earth. So, Metab, maybe not England, but the moon. 
Space is the next destination for part of India. Going upward and onward. All right, let's keep going. So lots and lots of visualization here. Here we go. Uh, other effects of the movement. The creation of the Himalayas is not the only effect of India's slow but steady crash into Asia. The same forces that push the Himalayas upward also create huge tension in the Earth's crust, which from time to time must be released, resulting in massive earthquakes. Some of history's most violent and destructive earthquakes came as a result of the Indian subcontinent's relentless surge into Asia. Interestingly, another common consequence of plate tectonics and continental drift, volcanoes, do not take place in the Himalayas. This is because the mountain range is so large and the crust underneath is so thick that any magma moving upwards solidifies before it can reach the peaks. In a sense, volcanic activity is extinct in the Himalayas. So good news for people living around the Himalayas. It is unlikely that you need to worry about volcanic eruption. All right, cool. So that's our passage. We've got a lot of visual uh, information. Okay. And... Um, now, let's do our best in the answers, all right? Let's answer the questions. That's our next step, all right? Now, when we answer these questions, we should not be relying on the passage first and foremost. What should we rely on? So what should we use firstly when we're answering the questions? What do you think? Swati, no multiple choice in today's class, but we definitely have some other ones, and you can check out our websites for those as well. Yeah, Sarav Deep says mind power. Yeah, of course. You have this amazing super processor on your shoulders. Uh, that's what you want to use first. So Begjan says use understanding, use logic. Absolutely. Okay. It is really stressful to take an exam and hope that the answers will magically reveal themselves from the text, okay? So make sure to practice this. It will just save you a lot of stress and you'll get a better band score, okay? So after you read the passage and start to answer questions, do not immediately rely on the passage to reveal the answers. Instead, use your super uh, quantum processor, your mind, to interpret and solve questions. Okay, you all have it. Thankfully, we're all born with it. Hitesh says, hey, ladies and gents, four gigs is enough. The brain's got plenty more than that. Um, we've got terabytes of processing power. So use that, absolutely, okay? And if you don't know the answer, don't panic, okay? There's strategies. Um, here we go. So moving land masses, raising or rising mountains, the Himalayas are massive. This is the Himalayan formation, okay? The Himalayas are massive. They span over 2,400 kilometers, and their formation provides evidence for something, the theory that our planet's land masses have shifted positions over eons. Bekchan says, continental drift. Lydia is confident and Abhishek that that's got to be the answer. Yeah. So, continental drift. Very good, right? The movement of the continents. Very good. Now, students, here's a really important piece of advice. If this is kind of a new word for you, uh, please do take a second to make sure that you have the spelling correct. Uh, these two words appear 
in the text several times. You probably remember that you saw it in the beginning when it was talking about um, the formation. So here it is. Move that up a little bit more. So continental drift. Now, this is not searching. You're not skimming and scanning for this because you know the answer. All you're doing is you're checking the spelling, okay? Uh, it's terrible when students know the answer, but they lose the mark because of spelling. So definitely uh, check the spelling. Good news for those of you who um, have... Um, or who are doing the computer-based exam because you can literally copy-paste that out of the text. So you can highlight, copy-paste, and there you go. You don't have to retype it, okay? So in this way, the computer-based exam, you're a little bit in a better position, but again, I mean, paper-based, you know, just pay attention to the letters, okay? So continental drift, okay? There's advantages to paper-based as well, all right? Okay, good. So far, so good. <clears throat> this is passage one, so it shouldn't be too, too terrible. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next one. How does it work? The uh, stenosphere is the something of the earth that below the crust. Okay. Uh, so the stenosphere is the something of the earth that's below the crust, that is below the crust. Uh, what do you think the word there is? What word would best fit? Uh, again, this word comes up a couple times, so if you're just skimming and scanning, you'll get lost a couple times because it appears a few different times. Okay. Uh, Beck John says layer. And that's probably right. <clears throat> if you have to check, uh, this is a noun. Okay because I have the article the. So that tells me that this has to be a noun, okay, is the layer. Uh, so if you're saying semi-solid Simran, it can't work because semi-solid is an adjective, all right? Um, Alex says material. I don't think they'll take material. Um, layer is the most accurate. So you do have to have the correct word from the passage. Okay. Now, when you have the right word, it's much easier to look for that as well as that uh, than looking for material. So, layer. Okay. If you write hot layer or molten layer, Hitesh, they'll take that. Okay. So, they'll take molten layer. That's definitely in the passage. All right. Uh, let's go to the next question. So, in this layer, now... You can obviously use questions to help you as well. Okay? So pay attention, use logic. In this layer, hot gas and liquid rise up and replace cooler areas. Uh, this process, called something, causes the change of the position of the Earth's continents over millions of years. Now, if some of you are physics majors, you might get that. I think Sarav Deep might be. Sarav Deep's like, I know that word. That's in my uh, science class. Convection. That's right, convection. Very good. So, convection. Now, again, if you don't know that, leave it. Leave it blank. Come back to it later, okay? Uh, don't just randomly search for answers. If you don't know this answer, leave it blank. Come back later if you have time, okay? Don't waste time searching for answers that you're not sure of because then you might lose time to answer questions that you are sure of, okay? Uh, remember, students, your goal when you're doing the exam is always to answer the questions that you know are correct and then worry about the other ones. Does that make sense? Okay. Het Patel, um, to remember the passage, make sure to visualize, okay? So picture the information in the passage. Really work hard on that, all right? So Beck John says, good, yes. Okay, that's an important point. So always answer the questions that you know you can get correct and then worry about the ones 
you find difficult. In this way, you will not run out of time answering unsure questions, answers at the cost of definite points. Okay, does that make sense? So don't sacrifice answers that you can definitely get points for to maybe get the answer for one that you're searching for, okay? All right. So, convection it is, All right? Yeah, uh, for students who can read it, so Amandeep Kaur says, same thing happened to me, I forget the passage. So in that case, you have the reading fluency, it sounds like, but you're missing the comprehension um, or the retention, okay? Uh, that's definitely another point, students. So you have reading fluency, which means being able to read the passage quickly. You have comprehension, which means being able to understand the passage. And then another element that we haven't talked too much about uh, directly is what's called retention. So retain, retention, meaning to hold on to the information. Once you have fluency and comprehension, definitely also focus on retention. So keeping the information in your mind so you don't have to flip the pages and get all crazy searching for answers, okay? All right, uh, so here we go. Creating the Himalayas. In short, the subcontinent of India caused the Himalayas. India used to be much further south, closer to the modern country of, and I saw a real diamond, Mitab, Raghav, and many others say that. That was Australia. Australia, it is. Uh, make sure that's a big A. It's the name of a country, okay? You write a small a, ba-boom, you just got that wrong, even though you had the right idea. Terrible. So, big A. Though India moved only 12 centimeters per year, this rate added up to over an something amount of time. So, this rate added up over an something amount of time. Yeah, enormous, Lydia is good. Yeah. So adjective here, for sure, enormous amount of time. Or there was another word there that they would take, which was immense. Okay, so enormous amount of time or immense amount of time. Both of those would be okay. So they used both, so in this case, they would accept both. Uh, eventually, the force of India pushing into Asia created the highest point on Earth. What's the answer, number six? That should be a give me. Uh, Karina, if you're not getting any of this, then really work on your reading fluency and comprehension. Just read every day a novel that you mostly can understand and spend a lot of time reading. Read magazines and so on uh, before you tackle the IELTS reading. Okay, so very good. This is one mountain, and Sohail uh, Hug says... Uh, Mount Everest. Yeah, and to be on the safe side, make sure you write both words. And big M, big E. Okay, Mount Everest. Uh, Metab, yeah, you can do Mount as well like that. Okay, um, but you can do it like that as well. So you can abbreviate Mountain. It's done a lot. Uh, Mount Everest. All right, very good. Nicely done. Karina, this is the reading passage for the IELTS exam. Okay, so here we have some true, false, not given questions. These are very common. I'm not going to get into too much strategy. I will just show you the strategy. Uh, so first, you always figure out if it's important uh, to decide if it's given or not given. In millions of years, the Himalayas will be much taller than they are today. Is it important to know whether or not the Himalayas are growing, staying the same, shrinking, according to this passage, the formation of the Himalayas? Is that important? 
Is it important to know the growth of the Himalayas when we talk about the formation of the Himalayas? Yeah, it's important. Because we know that the information is important, we can decide that it's given. Once we decide that it's given, we have to figure out if it's true or false. So is it true that the Himalayas are getting taller and taller? Yeah, that's true. So we know that the answer is true. Right? Remember, we even joked about this. Uh, I said to Mitab, where it looks like India is not going towards England, it's going towards uh, the moon. Right? Yeah, I said that, right? Okay, uh, number eight. <clears throat> India and Australia were once connected. Hmm. For the formation of the Himalayas, is that important? So is it important to know that India and Australia were once connected for the formation of the Himalayas? So Sied and Jainil say, no, it's not important because that has no connection to the Himalayas, right? There might have been some other mountains, but not the Himalayas. So it's not important. So therefore, I know that it's not given. Okay? We didn't visualize it, right? That's the other clue, is you did not see a picture of India connected to um, Australia. Okay? All right. Uh, question number nine. The tension between India and Asia has caused mountains to grow and earthquakes uh, to occur. So the tension between India and Asia has caused mountains to grow and earthquakes to occur. So is it important? Is it important to know about the force between India and Asia causing mountains and earthquakes? Yeah, it's important. So yes, so it's given. Is it true that the tension between India and Asia has caused mountains? Yeah, it's the Himalayas, right? So true or false? It's definitely true. Okay, so so far we have true, not given. Not given, by the way, you can just do like that. Okay. Uh, and number 10, volcanoes are active in the Himalayas. Is it important to know about volcanoes for the formation of the Himalayas? So is this one important? Is it important? Yay, nay. Volcanoes? Yeah, it's important because volcanoes also form mountains, right? So uh, that's important. So important, yes. Okay, so we know that it's given. And uh, is it true or false? So are there volcanoes in the Himalayas? And Bekchan says it's false. And uh, Hitesh says yay. And Babu Murad says yup. And uh, Harmandeep says a big no, thankfully, right? It's one less type of disaster to worry about in Asia and India and Nepal. Uh, so that would be a false, okay? So the correct answers here are true, not given, true, and false, okay? All right, great job, students. That's fantastic. So this is one of our... Uh, passages that will be released in our latest exams coming out uh, in early 2021 or late this year. Um, and then here we have three more questions. Uh, you have to choose which of these letters are correct for these. I'll leave the last three to you to figure out if it's A, B, or C for each one of these as I'm out of time for today. But Lots and lots of practice, lots and lots of tips for today uh, to get access to our six full practice exams. And if you're planning to sit the IELTS later in the year, then there will be 10 practice exams, plus all of our videos, interactive courses, and lots, lots more. Join hundreds and hundreds of successful students. Join our premium package at aehelp.com and 
for General IELTS at gieltshelp.com. I hope you enjoyed this class. It was definitely a pleasure teaching all of you in the many, many different uh, nations and on the different continents of the earth. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Tomorrow, uh, members, we will finish the task two that we started in the previous class. And for uh, this uh, all chat class, we will do a speaking part three at this time tomorrow with some practice and strategy. Have an awesome uh, rest of your Friday. And uh, hopefully I will see all of you tomorrow. Much love to all of you. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest. Bye for now.